How's it guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So in today's video we're going to be talking about one of my favorite king snake species and that is the Florida king snake. Now their scientific name is Lampropeltis Cthulhu Floridana and as their common name suggests they, are, they come from Florida and they are found throughout central Florida and northern Florida through the swamps and everglades. So they really love the warm climate, lots of rain, they're also found throughout the sugarcane fields there. So in this video today, we're going to be looking or uh, talking about how we care about uh, care for Florida king snakes, and then we're also going to be looking at all the incredible morphs that are now coming through in this species. So let's start off by learning all about the care of the Florida king. Okay, so here we have one of our normal Florida king snake adult females, and as you can see, they're really a thick-bodied snake. Um, they get quite large these king snakes, which is what makes them so great. Now just look at how beautiful she is. And she's just chilling here, checking me out. The babies can be quite jumpy and quite defensive, which is understandable. They, they do see us as a threat to them. But as they get older, they do tame down nicely. They're brilliant feeders, Florida king snakes. They, they feed on a diet of rodents, and we have very little problems getting the babies to feed. Most of the time, the whole clutch feeds without any issues. And the adults are also excellent feeders. And you can just see how chunky their bodies are. They really are a thick-bodied snake. And they just really are impressive. And when you see these guys and all the beautiful mutations at this size, it's also really amazing to see. They get to about 1.2 meters adult length. Uh, that's about their average size, which is about four foot. And we can keep them very similar to we keep all our other colubrid snakes or North American colubrids, like all our other corns and kings. We keep these guys the same. I'm going to show you shortly the setup of how we keep these Florida king snakes. But just look at how awesome this female is. Okay, guys, so this is how we keep our Florida king snake adults. This is a sub adult, but we also keep our adults in this. It's a 26 liter Addis tub. And what we have here as a substrate is a nice, simple, natural pine shaving, untreated natural pine shaving. We then have our water bowls with the nice little hide underneath. There's a little opening for the snakes to get underneath, which they really like. And then at the back of the rack, we have two heating cables that run along the back in this section over here. And then we control that temperature at about 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And the rest of the cage, all this other part of the cage is all at room temperature, which is about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And that gives them that temperature gradient so the snake can choose where they want to be. But the most important thing is that you have that hot spot at about your 30 degrees Celsius mark. You can use a number of different things uh, for the hot spot. You can just use your normal heat pads or your heat cables. And then other people might use uh, heat lamps or ceramic heat lamps. Whatever you decide to use, I would recommend trying to invest in the temperature controller as that will then automatically turn your heating element on and off and maintain it at the perfect temperature. So you don't have that risk on a hot day of it getting far too hot and it doesn't have to run on for um, for no, no reason um, at all. So definitely I would recommend trying to get a temperature controller. But basically that is it, that we keep them the same like we do our other king snakes and corn snakes and they just do really well on this kind of setup. Okay, so starting off with the morphs, we have this beautiful Harpo Florida king snake. And now Harpo is short for hypermelanistic, and what, it, what that is, it's a recessive mutation which reduces the dark um, pigments. So all your blacks and, and uh, browns, all those dark colors, um, they are reduced and they're creating this hypomelanistic color, which is a much brighter and much lighter color. And this is a recessive mutation and it's probably the most common mutation in Florida king snakes. Okay, and then next we have one of my favorite morph combos of Florida king snakes. This is a T minus Harbino Florida king snake, which comes from a, a special, specially selectively bred high orange line of Florida king. So this is a double recessive mutation. Oh, this guy's running away from me here. So this is a double recessive mutation. So this carries a T minus albino and a harpo, and we call that a harbino. And just look at the oranges in this snake. It is just truly amazing. I can't wait for this guy to get bigger. 
so we can breed them and make more of these. But just look at the orange in the snake. What a beautiful Florida king snake. Next up, we have a T-positive snow. And now what this is, this is another double recessive mutation. And what it is, it's a T-positive albino or lavender albino mixed with the azanthic gene. Now the T-positive albino, it's slightly different from the T-negative albino as um, it carries a gene called tyranase that carries um, dark melanin. So the albino is a darker albino than a normal T-negative albino, which has no dark melanin whatsoever. Then it, this is also then combined with the azanthic gene, which is a lack of color pigment. So it's a black and white snake. So together they make this T positive snow and it's just such a beautiful animal. And you can see that she still has a red eye, but it's a darker red eye. It's not a bright red eye. And there's still a lot of other mutations in Florida king snakes that we don't have, um, which is really exciting though, because it means that there's a lot more things that we can look forward to getting and working with. But uh, right now, we just really enjoy these new mutations that we've got into South Africa. And we're just looking forward to working with them, making more of them, and making some more combos with some lines that we're working with here. Okay, so what we have now here is a white-sided Florida king snake. Now, this is a recessive mutation as well. And as you can see, what it does is it increases the white on the snake, especially on the sides of, its, of the snake. That's where it gets its name from. You can just see that white line running along the whole body of the snake, and it is so beautiful. We do see this mutation in other colubrid species, such as uh, some of the rat snake species. You get white-sided in them. Um, a few of the other king snake species have them as well, this white-sided mutation. Look how, how beautiful that is. I would really now like to see a T minus albino white sided. That's something that we'd love to breed here at Ultimate Exotics, and it's a project that we'll be working on in the future. But it's going to be really great to see how that comes out. I think it'll be such an incredible looking snake. Okay, guys, just look at how beautiful this mutation is. This is also now another double recessive. As, you, as we saw earlier, the white sided, this is now a white sided harper or a harper white sided. And just look at the pearl-like color on the snake. It is just so beautiful. So this is a double recessive mutation with the hypermelanistic, which we saw earlier, and the white-sided that we saw earlier. Just look at how incredible the snake is. This is also just one of my favorite combos. Another great double recessive mutation to be working with. It's just amazing how little black it now has but you can still see the faded pattern along the, the spine of the snake at the sides are really white and it has this real pearl color to it just an all-round beautiful snake so for a number of years we've been selecting um, our harpo florida kings uh, for their high red and this year we hatched one out and just look at how red this harpo florida king snake came out this beautiful bright orangey red color and we're so happy with how this line's going it was just so bright so there's a lot of potential with the florida kings like i said they're just all around a great snake they eat well they give very little issues they are hardy species like i said they can be a bit grumpy or bitey as babies but as adults they tame down nicely so it's just an all around a great king snake to work with and with all these new mutations i think the florida king snake has an exciting future in our collection when dealing with florida king snakes in the reptile hobby you might have come across the term brooks king snake and often florida king snakes are referred to as brooks king snakes the reason being is that the Brooks king snake was thought to be a subspecies of the Florida king snake, and they were Lampropeltis cutula brooksi. But in the in the in, in the recent years, they have now done away with the Brooks king snake as a subspecies, 
and they all are now referred to as Florida King Snakes. So that's just something to take note of when you hear the term Brooks King Snake. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have found it helpful and I hope you've learned something about these beautiful Florida King Snakes. Like I mentioned, they are definitely one of my favorite species of King Snakes here at Ultimate Exotics. They are a big, thick bodied King Snakes. They're easy to work with and they are hardy species as well. And with all these new colors and new color morphs um, becoming available and these selectively bred lines, this species has a great future and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can produce in the future. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment below, and most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep well. Cheers.